What is going on? Welcome to another edition of the Rich People Atlanta. Northside Drive is kind of complicated. So this is going to be the first half of Northside Drive, which is literally a mile from my house. And this is where the estates are. Uh, essentially, you go down Northside Drive and what we're getting ready to do is head over towards Powers Ferry because I was thinking, I was trying to go one way and I actually went another way. And what you're going to see are estates because, you know, over here, there tends to be more homes that are closer together. But over here on Northside Drive, you will see estates. You will see houses or mansions. Let's call them mansions with a lot of acreage. And I'm a little, little um, leery of taking the drone lower because the way that Northside Drive is set up is it's on a hill and it dips. And I don't know if the drone adjust for this height. I don't, I really don't know. I'm going to have to Google that. It's something else I ran into. I would go to a certain spot and there was a geo fence around some houses. So this has me thinking that maybe a celebrity lives in this area or something where they have put it where your drone can it like, it will go so far and it will just stop. It was the, the craziest, craziest thing um, that I have ever experienced flying drones. It was um, interesting. But this is where, you know, I'm going to do a part two of this where I'm going to drive where I can drive because essentially when you go down Northside Drive, you, you, you don't see, you all you see are long driveways. Like you see, this long driveway that's right here that's going up to the that's all you see are long driveways and the way that it is is very hilly so you can't you can see maybe the roof of the house but you can't really get a good look and there's another part of north side drive that i'm thinking about uh going over and kind of lowering the drone because i gotta be really really careful of trees because trees or a drone's mortal enemy. <laughs> but you're seeing all these estates. You're seeing these pools. And this, you know, one of the things that for me, I will speak for myself, is this is very inspiring because it's possible to create enough value, to create enough wealth where you live in a house that's bigger than a small country church. I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is what I see all of the time when I'm riding around here. And you know, when you live in the neighborhood, you just, it kind of comes your normal. You don't go around. Like every time someone comes visits me and they're driving through the neighborhood, that's like, what do these people do? What do these people do? And I was like, they're doctors, they're attorneys, they're executives, they're athletes, they're entrepreneurs. You know, they're just doing it at a high level. A very, very high level. And one of the things that you've got to understand that all of this started off in someone's imagination. This was someone's like, hey. I want to build this big old mansion and I want to put it in a nice neighborhood. Cause one of the things like, um, the video that I did where they paid 2.2 million cash for this house that was sitting on five acres was illustrative of what happens around here during the great recession, the construction slowed down, but it didn't stop. And I guarantee you, some of these houses are sitting on, there used to be an older house there. This is one of the things that is normal around here 
Well, they will take a perfectly good house, knock it down and build whatever else they want on it. And I begin to understand this because, you know, when I was going through that older house that was built in 1952, you just don't have a lot of the creature comforts that you come to expect that you desire. Like that house, which was about 3000 square feet, it didn't have a master bedroom. It did not have a bath off of the master bedroom. It did not have the large walk-in closet. You know, if you're going to drop $1.5 million for a house, that's kind of your expectation. That's kind of what you're looking at. That's kind of the process. That's the, you know, what you feel that you're going to get. That's what you feel is part of the process. And like all you see, look at these long driveways. That's, this consistently what you see are these long driveways, very long driveways and a few side streets that will splinter off into a mini mansion haven. Uh, this is, you know, like I said, this is the first part of Northside Drive. I have not really got into the other section. And you know this that a lot of these houses have a lot of room, have a lot of um, acreage, a lot of acreage. You can blow wind out your window and your neighbor would not smell it. Because you know, th this is one of the things. On this side, this is heavily emphasized. And when I do the driving video, because uh, I was leaving and I found another area that I didn't even cover with the drone. And literally in this area, there are hundreds of houses like this. I want you to think about this. There are hundreds of million to multi-million dollar residences in this area. I would assume, you know, now that I've been getting out and I've been looking around, there might be 1,200, you know, in 30327. There might be 1,200 of these houses. And 30327 kind of spills off into 30328, 30342, 30319. That's Brookhaven. And in this area, and this this house over here is a modern house. I can tell by the way it's built. And you're seeing pools. You're seeing regular pools and you're seeing freshwater pools when they're like that dark green. And you're, you're seeing so much over here. So much acreage. And, you know, with my plan to create 100,000 corporate citizens, some of my people are going to get to this level. Some of my people will be living like this, living like this, enjoying life like this, because, you know, uh, someone asked me today, like, what's the problem if you're a corporate citizen with financing a car? If you go ahead and develop business credit, I was at the Porsche dealership today. I meant to ask the guy what you need to get a Porsche with business credit. I'm going to go back and do that probably in the middle of the week. I'm not going to do that on a Saturday because they're going to be swamped. Uh, I've got to get my car service. So I hadn't made an appointment and I'm going to, you know, you, you're getting a business lease in your business name where you get to write off the price of the lease. You get to write off the insurance to reduce your overall taxable income. All right. I can, I can get that. But here's the thing. I have made a lot of money and my business credit isn't up to snuff to lease a car. I don't have all the paperwork to lease a car. I already know this. I already know this. And, you know, there's nothing, quote, wrong with. Well, actually, let me be 100 percent transparent with my philosophy. If you're beating your chest and declaring to the world that I'm a millionaire and you are financing a car, 
To me, that looks sloppy. I'm just going to keep it the buck. It looks sloppy. It's like, wait a minute, you're a millionaire, but you got to finance a car because you don't have enough cash. And th this argument of, well, I don't want to let the cash go because I can have this cash in this investment. I've done a lot of research. Over half of America doesn't have investments. And the 20, 30% of the people, once again, that's half of America doesn't have investments. And then when we go with the 30% of the people who do have investments, their investments are not significant. Roughly 20, 15% of America has significant investments or ro robustly investing. So there's only a small percentage of people who are playing that I got investments and I don't want to pull my money out of my investments. Now I'm about to go ahead and flow the thesis to you. If you are claiming you're a millionaire and you don't have enough money for a, a car, I would consider you no, know, because legitimately, if you have a million in assets, you are a legitimate millionaire. But I'm going to call you a paper millionaire. And that is the most of the millionaires. There's 21 million millionaires in America. Okay. And the majority of them have a net worth of 1 million or a little bit above. And it's asset base. Many of the people who are claiming beating their chest to be millionaires could not go out and pay cash for a Porsche. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Unless they had to sell something which would dramatically reduce their net worth. And I'm going to give you this thesis. If you're like, I have a video on, on Savage Finance. Look at these. Look at these estates. Those are estates. That's not a house in some yards. That is an estate. Um, I, I have this thesis. If you're in danger zone number one, the danger zone number one, $50,000 or less, you would be better fitted, better benefited by starting a small business that makes $1,500 per, per month than investing in stocks, bonds, Bitcoin, or any of this other stuff. Why? Because you don't have enough income to become an investor of significance. You don't have enough money. You could throw a couple of hundred bucks at an investment. And uh, I had someone challenge me, which got me doing this research, because this is one of the things that you see consistently in the investment community. If you put a little bit of money away for a long time, you'll be a millionaire. Okay, what did I just tell you? Half of America ain't investing. And the 30% of the people, who, well, actually, let's see, half of America, let's go ahead, let me go ahead and clean it up. Like 70% of the people who are investing don't really have significant investments. 70, 80% of the people. Fun fact. A lot of people who are investing because they included people who had saved cash money in their bank account. A lot of people have their money sitting in the bank account. They're not in stock. They're not in, they're not in any real estate. They have their money. Now look right there. You see that long driveway and I should have flew. There's another long driveway and there's, another long driveway where you can actually kind of see the house through the gate. But this is all you see on Northside drive. Cause I may just drive through there and just show you all you're going to see is just gates because you can't, you can't see the house from the road. And, you know, going back to my rant about investments, um, you know, investments are good if you have the cash, but, um, if you're just throwing like a few hundred bucks toward an investment and that's all you're ever going to do, it's not going to come up to a lot. It's not because essentially uh, I want to pour water on the argument that if you put away a hundred bucks, you know, it's from a mathematical standpoint, it's true. But from a practical standpoint, it's false because people are not doing it. They're not doing it. So, you know, you could buy a lottery ticket and win. You could do that. 
or you could invest like once again long driveway courtyard look at the driveway on this sucker it's like it's it's crazy so essentially what i want you guys to understand is i guarantee you the majority of the people who are living in these houses they got there through entrepreneurship or maybe they were an athlete maybe they were a um, television person and this this is kind of where i'm at and yeah that's the house that i was parked next to well the mansion and it is a mansion with yeah i wanted to get all that that's all one piece of property that somebody owns that compound let's call it a compound and this is 15 minutes from downtown atlanta uh one of the great things about this neighborhood is it's like living in the suburbs but having access to the city it's the craziest thing now here's another one big house pool tennis courts then you know i mean it, it was just crazy what is going on down here because there is so much to be had there is so much to be envisioned for the future there is so much that you can do and like i said i guarantee you and i, I want to do this i don't know how much trouble i get into this i want to knock on the doors and it's like you know that guy on tiktok who who stops the people with the nice cars it's like what do you do i want to knock on these doors like what do you do but essentially a lot of the, you you can't really they, they're gated <laughs> you can't you just can't walk up to their house because they're gated and you know i don't know if i would ring the gate thing and just inquire i don't know how that would work i don't know i really really don't know now we're now this one we're going down north side drive once again all you see are long driveways and mansions 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 and there is going to be one house that's going to pop up let's see as we're because we're going now this is actually heading toward 285 this is not that far from 285 and it like i said it's like living in the suburbs but having close accity to access to the city uh, this house right here on the left i believe dallas austin look him up he used to be a big um because they they had the house showcase because it looks like a spaceship but dallas austin i think he owned that house i don't know if he still lives there because you know dallas austin was with tll's TLL, tlc baby face he was a producer from back in the day outcast and all that other stuff but this right here as you're about to see is very very close to 285 and this is where it stopped i ran into another one of those geo fences but literally not half a mile you're from 285 at this juncture and look at this compound right here it's a compound that's acres baby acres acres and acres and acres man acres and you know because essentially it wouldn't really do me a bit of good to drive by these things because like i said i'm going to do because this is the rich people of land the first half of north side drive i'm probably going to do this in three parts because once again this is zip code three zero three zero three two seven and it spills off into three zero three two eight three zero three fifty three zero three forty two three zero three nineteen but you got folks and also something else i noticed today while i was out with the drone i had a whole bunch of women waving at me i don't know what's going on i must started 
I must have started looking real good because I've had a lot of women flirting with me lately. It's been interesting. It's, it's done wonders for my self-esteem. It's done a lot. <laughs> it's done a lot. But, yeah. This, this, this right here is in Atlanta. And once again, this is the richest zip code in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Arkansas, and most of Florida. There's a few zip codes in Florida that have more wealth. But literally, this is the wealthiest zip code in the Southeast, outside of a few zip codes in Florida. And once again, I want you guys to understand Someone who lives in this house was a little child that grew up and had some big, big dreams. And they went out and they accomplished their dreams. And they got these pieces of property. And there are some of you out there who have big dreams, big ambitions, and you can make this happen. So once again, corporate citizens, um, you can get in the art of holding. You're going to get the fast start boot camp. Link is below. In April, that's going to change where I may do a bundle where it's going to go up. And you know, your best deal is to get in now. Link is below. And who knows? One day you can be living like this.